From the time I began witnessing biblically using the principles from a teaching called Hell's Best Kept Secret, I kept saying to myself as I shared the gospel with strangers, oh, I wish I had a camera over my shoulder to show what's happening. In 1999, I had an answer to my prayers. A television program from Arizona asked if they could send a cameraman to follow me when I shared my faith. Here's the Seal Beach Kid. Hey, can you name any of them? Um, yes, thou shall not murder. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not. Oh, hold on. I, I know. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you know a few. Yeah, I know. Now, do you think you've kept those Ten Commandments? Um, yes. Have you ever told a lie? Well, at some times, you know, most every human does. So you broke that one? Yes. So what are you called if you tell a lie? A liar. Have you ever stolen? No, sir, I haven't. Even something really small. Be honest before God. Well, I guess a little stuff. Like, yeah. maybe like a piece of gum or something. Oh, just a piece of gum. So what does that make you? Like, a st oh, a stealer, I guess. Thief. Thief. See, the value of the thing you steal doesn't make any difference. If I open your wallet and just take out one dollar, it's as bad as taking out a hundred dollars. I'm a thief. Now, Jesus said, if we look at a woman and lust after her, we commit adultery with her in her heart. You ever done that? Um, no, sir. I... You've Sorry. never looked at a woman with lust? Um, well... Your friend over there is laughing at you. He doesn't think you're speaking the truth. Well, I mean, yes, I have looked at a woman, you know. So you've told another lie. All right? Yes. So you've really blown it, haven't you? So you've broken three commandments. We've only looked at three. We haven't looked at the other seven. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Yes, sir. So instead of using a four-letter filth word to express disgust, you've taken the name of the God who gave you life and used his name as a curse word, which is called blasphemy. So on Judgment Day, when God judges you by that standard, are you going to be innocent or guilty of breaking His commandments? I will be guilty of that one. Do you think you'll go to heaven or hell? Um, well, I think, I think I'd probably go to heaven in the sense that that's, that's one thing that from now on I'll try to improve myself and that God might forgive me for, all my, for the sins that I've broken from that. So do you think God should let murderers and liars and thieves and adulterers into heaven? I guess not. So you're in big trouble. Really, you're heading for hell, aren't you? Yeah. Does that concern you? Yes. Yes, it does. Because there's nothing more valuable than your life, is there? Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? No, sir. Because your eyes are precious to you, aren't they? And they're the windows of your soul. Your soul or your life looks out those those eyes and Jesus said you're to despise the value of your eye compared to the value of your soul he said if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out and cast it from you for it's better to enter heaven without an eye than go to hell with both your eyes and do you know why Jesus died on the cross why he did for, uh, for sinning sinning well he died for our sins for the sins of the world of everybody around the world like you know, sacrificing himself for everyone else now do you know how to uh, partake in that gift of salvation do you know what you should do Well, if you were on a plane and you knew you had to jump and there was a parachute under the seat, what would you do? I'd take the parachute. Put it on. You wouldn't just believe in it, would you? You'd put it on. Yes. That's exactly what you have to do with Jesus. The Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to repent. That is, turn from your sins once and for all and put your faith in Jesus the same way you put your trust in a parachute. The moment you do that, the Bible says you'll pass from death to life. You'll come out of darkness into light and you'll receive God's gift of everlasting life. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, The Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of the most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com.